for many of the experience. You guys have paid a lot of money to be here right and now. to travel here. And we appreciate and tons of people. It's like, can we help? Can we help? Can we help? Enjoy yourself. That's what we need you to do. Help by enjoying Hi, yourself. Everyone. Okay. Hi, Mark. Just so we're very clear of who we have. We've got Rob with Second Sense. We've got Guapo with Storage Legends. We've got Aunt Camelia George. She's really with herself, although we'll say she's what the hell's family, okay? We've got uh, Christian and Patience over here. We've got What You Doing, Willis, Travis, and Julia. We've got Cocky's Flippin' Adventures, Cocky and Marie. We've got Dangerous Dave right back here as well. With all right, we are live here at Half Mill Time to Grill. And listen, if you didn't come, this has been... Would you agree this is one of the most insane events you've ever... Yeah. Holy cow. Holy cow. There has been puking. There has been $500 found. There has been dunking. I mean, there's been things going on here. Listen, a dude in the very beginning actually asked me to sign his nipple. No joke. Where are you? Where's the nipple signing? There he is right there. There's Chuck. He's like... George signed the other one. What is your problem, woman? I you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So we got the whole team up here. We're going to have a little bit of fun with a Q&A. And actually, uh, Conky and Noreen at some point are going to do a giveaway as well. You'll understand that once they share that with you. So what I need is, everybody's ready, I got everybody up here, we're ready for some questions, right? There's a live Q&A here at Half Mill Time to Grill, this has been an insane, crazy time already, we're only halfway through it. Let me see, first question, who's got, don't fight over it, don't fight over it, okay. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right here to Cha, to Tom. So Tom, here's what you're gonna do, you're gonna, you're gonna tell me who your question is for, you're gonna ask your question, your question is not a story, you're not a preacher, right? All right, we're gonna save the preaching for me. Your question will be such as, what is blank, 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 blank? Not, hey, back in 1937, I was, do you like corn? Okay. All right, Tom, here's what you wanna do. If I get, you see how the microphone is touching my mouth? I don't see that. It's a little gross, I've been licking it, but um, the closer it is to your mouth, the better everybody will be able to hear. Tom. Here you go. Here's your question. Tell us who it's for and what the question is. This is for Pampas. Where did you get that coffee? <laughs> All right. Dave. Dangerous Dave from Camp Patmos. I'm going to give you the microphone. You are no stranger to a microphone. Uh, yes, Dangerous Dave here with Camp Patmos. And uh, I travel all over the place, and I always carry my Jet Boil and Black Rifle coffee. So I just went out to my Jeep and made me a little pot of coffee, because uh, that's what keeps me going, Black okay. Rifle coffee and Jesus. All right. All right. We were joking earlier. They were like, are you going to auction off? Are you going to auction off this, your sweatshirt? All right, the first sweatshirt we ever auctioned off was on eBay. It brought in over $14,000. This is not a joke. Anybody has $15,000 and wants this What the Hail sweatshirt, it will go directly to Camp Patmos. I'm not joking. If you're that person, you go, you know what? I want to help kids go to camp. I want to help them learn about Jesus. There, there's your sweatshirt. I'll sign it for you. I'll wipe my brow. I'll wipe other things. You know, whatever. Whatever. Oh, that's what got you, not this. Not this. The armpit got you. Yeah. Why are you showing that? Okay. So, you know what, Dave? Would we would we accept ten thousand as well? Yeah. I mean, it's undervalued. The first one we ever sold on eBay. But um, if you want to help Camp Patmos out, by all means, please do. Okay. Another question. We're gonna take a. You know what? We're right here with Butch. Butch, you're gonna tell us who the question is for and what your question is. Okay, it's for Christian and Patience. When are you going to start your YouTube channel? Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Um, here, I, I'm going to tell you guys all something. I don't know. Wait, wait, don't answer yet. I'm going to tell you, they can't hear me right now. I'm not on the microphone. Everybody who works for me has an NDA. It's a non-disclosure agreement. They can't start a YouTube channel. If they do, <laughs> All right, so what's your answer? What's your answer? I don't know. I don't know. 
No, never. New if rule. Gonna, new rule. If we're going to get in trouble, then it's going to be never. <laughs> There's no set thing. So, we don't know. Yeah, we don't that, know. That's the, that's the answer we can get. We don't TBD. know. TBD. Yeah, TBD. TBD. Okay, so, follow-up question. Determined. You guys have discussed it at length. Yeah. We have discussed it. We've thought about it a lot. We, we have thought about it. What has held you back so far? Germany. You know how much you have us work? <laughs> <laughs> I spoil these two. Do not listen. They are spoiled. We are spoiled. We are, we are spoiled. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to take another question. I'm going to... There's, there's one over here. Oh, oh my goodness. It's... This is, this is like one of the only youngins here at Half Mill Time to Grow. I didn't even know. One of many. I didn't, okay, there are a handful. I didn't even know. Holy cow, look at this. Mac and cheese grilled sandwich from Bubba Q's. <laughs> Man, they might put that on the menu. Okay, you're going to tell us who your question is for and what is your question. Okay. This question is for Guapo. Um, <laughs> why do you always wear sunglasses? <laughs> okay, every adult in here knows that answer. <laughs> I'm walking away. Why? 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 Oh my goodness. That mic ain't gonna work. Oh, I guess we're good. Grab the legends here from Storage Legends. Um, hi, everybody. Um, uh, I wear glasses all the time to hide my eyes because if I don't hide my eyes, then I'll be afraid of everybody. So that's my answer. I love you guys. Okay. There we go. Stage party. Stage oh my goodness. I thought we said we were gonna keep some of those crazy questions out of bounds, but all right, we got we got another question over here. You're gonna tell us who the question is for and what the question is. My question is for everybody except Corpo. And I want to know how many people are willing to help me pick him up and get him back in the dunk tank where he belongs. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did we just get an? Did we just get an answer? Uh, how many people to put yeah. you up in a dunk yeah. tank? I say we just do it now. Well. Sounds like there's a dog ready to dunk him too. All right, we're gonna take another question. We're gonna take another question. If you got a question? You go ahead and raise your hand. We've got people inside the building. We got people outside the building. I'm gonna try. I see this one over here. I'm gonna try and make my way. What's up, Jack? Okay. Yeah. Okay, excuse me. Pardon, pardon. Lady with a baby. Lady, that is not the announcement, the huge news that I am pregnant. Okay? Lady with a baby. Lady with a baby. Excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. If you're going to tell us who the question is for and what the question is. Question is for George. Why are there socks in the men's room? Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me, pardon me. Excuse me, pardon me. Lady with the baby. Lady with the baby. We can do it. Yeah. We have one. We'd all like here. to know why there are socks in the men's room. Why are there socks in the men's bedroom? I mean, bathroom? Whoa! <laughs> What's going on? It beats me. Was it me? Was it me? Does that answer your question? Or me? And now you understand. Okay. I see a hand back here. I'm going to go back here first. I'm going to make my way. Lady with a baby. Lady with a baby. I'm going to make my way all the way. I'm gonna, ooh, this is fun. It's like Pac-Man. All right, who's the question for and what is the question? Yeah. This is for Christian and Patience. What does it uh, feel like to work for Jeremy? Christian oh. and Patience. Oh, that's true. What does it feel Track like lightly. to work oh, track for Jeremy? Oh, Be they're honest. yelling now. Be honest. Oh. Be honest. Be honest. Hey, why don't you ask me what it's like to work with Christian and Patience? Over, over 2,400 people watching right oh now. My, so. It's amazing working for Jeremy. We never know what we're going to do. <laughs> what the hell are we going to do? Yeah, what the hell are we going to do? We're not sure. <laughs> I have a great time. I mean, I get injured a lot more than any other job I've had, but I mean, I try. You're Captain Fumble Nuts Jr. Yeah, yeah I made that name. That's, uh, I love that name. <laughs> this is, everybody's always like, Christian is a junior of Jeremy. We went and bought gum at the gas station before in the morning, and I was like, oh, I'll open it. And I pull out the first piece of gum. I drop it down in the seat. I'm like, Christian, you want a piece of gum? He's like, yeah. He drops it down in the seat. I was like, this is, 
This is crazy. Okay, we got another, I see a hand right here. You're gonna tell us who the question is for. What is the question? I don't know if I'm ready, you but... You better be ready. What you got? What's it like working with them two? <laughs> they I can't see it, they got Just those two or George as well? Just those two. Okay, just, yeah, because you throw a whole other dynamic in there with George. We don't know Okay, so the reality with Christian impatience in this culture, I'm going to talk business. You guys know I entertain... And then when you get me in a business question, I talk business. And I'm a businessman. At my core, I'm a businessman. I think most of you have realized that. But I love having fun with business. In this current culture in hiring employees, it is very, very, very difficult to find people that aren't selfish, that aren't asking, how much do I make? What time do I get my lunch? And when is my vacation? Okay? So that one thing just so... I think Dave can understand with me. Dave and I, we've hired... We have hired hundreds if not thousands of individuals and we're looking for people who actually understand a mission and what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to do and not asking what is it what's in it for me right would you agree with that yeah we always we hire hearts more than skill because we can teach people what to do but it's the hearts so to be brutally honest with you just like buying the art building out of the blue never saw it coming hiring christian impatience out of the blue never saw it coming and christian impatience um they go above and beyond to, to an annoyance of thanking me for every meal when they're when i have them traveling i pay for every meal they don't pay for anything so I, they'll, they'll be like they'll go hey thank you thank you thank you and i'm sitting there going listen you already know this is part of the gig okay so with my employees if if they're traveling and i require them to travel i pay all expenses but they actually say thank you and i think they really mean it and with christian and patience they've never come to me and go can we have can we have a raise now that's not to say last year they got a significant raise not only did they get a significant raise i i offered them housing and i give them the salary i said hey we had a, an amazing year last year was our record year as far as our business goes and they got and they got they got a significant raise and they got a housing raise and that's the housing doesn't take away from their salary it's the housing i don't want my employees to think how in the world am i going to pay my bills I want my employees to think, and you may think this is selfish, but I want you to understand this from a business point of view. I want my employees to think, how are we going to do what we need to do every day and honestly make the business thrive and survive? And I tell them a lot of the ins and outs of the business so that they can understand business. What is the greatest investment you can ever make in your life? Real estate. Okay, there we go. So it, to be honest with you, it's refreshing. When I've hired people in the past, I always look for people that grew up in family-owned small businesses because they understand. They understand it's work. If we don't work, we don't eat. They understand farmers. They understand we get up and we get the job done, then we eat. We take the break when it's done. And I think they get that. It makes it easier in my life. I've shared this and this is 100% true. I don't draw a salary. I'm the only one on the team that doesn't draw a salary. I have two choices. I either, I either pay people and I have help and get no salary, or I draw a salary, I have no help. I'd rather have help. And I appreciate them. And they've never asked me for more money. They've never asked. That doesn't mean they haven't gotten it. They've never asked for a bonus. That doesn't mean they haven't gotten it. They've never asked for better housing. Doesn't mean they haven't gotten it. I'm just saying, do you understand the heart? Yeah. That's refreshing. We, right, Dave? That's refreshing. So I'm giving you a 100% honest answer for everybody here, everybody out there. It's very, very refreshing. A lot of times, you know, when I'm down, Christian and patients will be like, yeah, we're going to do this. I'm like, we can't do this. And like, yeah, yeah, we are. We're going to do this. When I break my foot, patients is like, yay, this is fun. So, you know, and when they're down, I'm like, oh, come on, we can do this. You know, so we, I think there's a good balance there. It works. It works well. Now, if I could find more Christians and patients, I would be even more thrilled. So, yeah. That's the answer. That's yeah. is a long answer. Where, where, where? I got, okay, we got a question over here. We want to know who the question is for and your answer. My answer. <laughs> oh, your question. I want you to say my name when you did on the video. Mari Parker. 
Mary. Mary. So this was for me. Okay, that one. All right, we got we got another one over here. We got another one. Over, oh, I see I see one right here. I see one right here. All right, we want to know your question and who's it for. This is for everyone tonight. Who is going to break the gate? Oh. <laughs> well, we already know the answer on that one. <laughs> That'll be me. <laughs> Do we really need to, to have anybody else answer? But <laughs> Rob broke it the first time, and I told all of you guys that it wasn't me. I told okay. you. To clarify any rumors, Rob is the one that broke the gator, and the, and just so everybody understands, we we have a guideline. So when they're out with me, the guideline is this: you break it, you pay for it. I don't care if they use it. They break it, they pay for it, and Rob immediately paid for it. So so I want to be very, very clear. Rob did do it, and Rob paid for it. All right, I'm going to get to you, Max. I see you right here. All right, we're coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. All right, we want to know your question and who's it for. It's really for you, Jim, I guess, for all of you. How did, how did your YouTubers move? All right, they want to know. She said it's for me, but I'm I'm gonna put it all on your guys' hands. She said, "How did how did all of you YouTubers meet?" It's really really interesting how we've all met, and I'm gonna put it, Noreen. I'm gonna start with you, and then you can add it off to Conky, to Dave, to George, to Patience, to Julia. So I'm just I'm gonna sit down and relax because I'm tired. Okay, actually the story kind of started with Conky. Conky, why don't you come up here? How do we get into this kid? Oh, the YouTube thing? Yes. Okay. It's a long story. Yes. <laughs> but we have time, so I'll tell them a little bit. Way back in the Oh, hey. A few years ago, I, I, I was the first person in this room to own a schoolhouse, okay? Everybody knows Jeremy has a schoolhouse. He got the idea from me. Wow. Right? So, <laughs> so, there you go. I bought a schoolhouse a few years ago. And my intention, the original intention was to, tutor, to convert it into storage facilities. So I started researching storage facilities on YouTube of all places. And you type in storage facility on YouTube and you get him. So I started... I don't even know why I did this. I started watching his videos. And I thought, that guy's nuts. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna follow him. <laughs> and then they started popping up again. And I thought, well, I'll watch again and see what, you know. And then I just kind of fell in love with the whole thing. I met him at a, um, at a, a storage auction in Medina. Medina. Yeah, it was, it was the same place where you met Crazy Guy. Yes. Crazy Guy, yeah. And uh, I bought a unit, and I invited him to film part of it. And then he eventually let me get a unit in, in Worcester. Yeah, for $55. We called that the Vince unit. In case you watch my videos, it's the Vince unit. It was an amazing unit. It should have gone for thousands of dollars. Right, Jeremy? And when I was bidding, I got the unit for $55. And when I was bidding on it, um, everybody was looking at Jeremy and said, what's wrong with you? And he was actually letting me buy it to talk me into starting YouTube. So that's how I started YouTube with that unit. With that, with that unit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Around the same time back in 2019, um, I knew it was going to be. Can't hear me. There we go. Back in 2019, I found out I was going to be losing my job. So. Conky says, well, we could go and buy these storage units like Jeremy does, and then you guys can go on, you can go and list stuff on eBay, and it just kind of grew from there. So, Jeremy, thank you so very much for what you've shown, what you've done for us, because now we have a better plan. I mean, this is something we can do because, you know, we're near retirement age, so this is something we can kind of do after we retire, and we've been doing the videos, and it's just, I know, it's amazing when I sit there and I tell Conky, I said, when we were coming up back in the 80s, there was nothing like this. So it, we're so grateful. Jeremy, again, George, again, thank you so much for helping us. And that's our journey. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I was living in a store.
Dodge units. <laughs> Jeremy opened the door to my life. No, um, uh, I met Jeremy uh, back in uh, 2008 when actually I went to work for him at a camp. And, oh wait, yeah. And uh, so uh, that's how I got to know him and been connected with him and uh, just seen God blessing uh, over the years. So it's been great to know you, Jeremy, and got to meet George. And oh, he's on the floor now. So, uh, but thank you, uh, and just for having us join this too. So yeah. We got married back in 012. <laughs> There's an article out there that says Jeremy and I have been married since 2012, but we haven't met. We didn't meet until 2018. So Jeremy and I, we met back in 2018 on a dating app. <laughs> 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 Farmers only. Farmers only. Farmers only. Farmers only. Farmers only. <laughs> And he asked, do you mind if I start recording our dates? And I was like, that's a little awkward, but sure. <laughs> so he started filming our dates and he started uploading it on YouTube. And I started making cameo appearances on the channel. And it, the channel used to be a completely different name. Does anyone here remember what the old name was? HTH Adventures, and then we changed it December of 18, December, we met July of 18, changed the name of the channel December of 18 to What the Hell, and was working full time, worked in healthcare, was doing cameo appearances in the videos, got diagnosed with breast cancer after surgery and radiation treatment, I, I looked at him and I was like, you know what, life's too short. I'm going to go ahead and quit. Take the leap, quit, and do YouTube full time. And that happened July of 2019. My last day at my job was July 3rd. July 4th was Independence Day, so it was my first day of being independent. And July 4th of 2019 was also the day that we hit a milestone of 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> so we had a triple celebration that day, and we've been making videos ever since. Ours is easy. How did we all meet? How did all of us meet? Yeah. Here, I'll hold it for you. I don't know how we all met. <laughs> oh, please, you know how we met. I know how I met Jeremy and George, but I don't remember when I sorry. met Guapo or Rob. It was probably at an auction. It was probably at an auction. <laughs> we met Jeremy in, what was that, February, February or March of 2019. It was right before I lost my subbing job because I was a substitute teacher, and COVID hit. And Jeremy was nice enough to take a chance on me because I had never lived anywhere on my own besides at school, and he was like, you know what, I'm gonna take a chance on you, you can have this apartment. And I was like, sweet, I was like, can I bring my boyfriend? <laughs> He's not her brother. Oh, there's a lot of people who think me and Christian are brother and sister. <laughs> We're not no. brother and sister. But, oh my bad, can you hear me better? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I honestly, after meeting Jeremy, it was crazy because he was like, let's start going to auctions and stuff. And I was like, all right. So we would go, and that's where we met Rob and Guapo and Conky. I remember meeting Conky, though, because he's got the coolest voice in the whole world. I could listen and to him here, read all the time. He has a big shoe size. <laughs> Short driveway, though. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I think I met Jeremy the same way Patience met him. I mean, she took me to go see the apartment one time, and Jeremy was also there, I think, and we signed the papers, and I gave him money, and... <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Re remember when you viewed the apartment? Yeah. Okay, so you, who came with you? My mom. And what did she start doing? She was, uh, I don't know, attacking she was, you with she, questions. She was asking you, and what did I tell your mom? You're not ready the apartment. Your daughter is. <laughs> Christian, is anybody brave enough to talk to her mom like that? No. No. Okay. All right, here you go. Uh, I do want to clarify, I've, I've, I have actually employed well over a thousand 
uh, teenagers, early 20s, and when their parents come hovering over them, that is a red flag, no. And so when I, when I, when I did the actual filtering process with patients, I did tell her mom, you're not the tenant, she is. She has to ask me questions. You can stand by and view. So anyways, that's part of my philosophy of life, which now brings us to Travis and Julia. Travis! All right, first I want to say thanks to each and every one of y'all for coming out to Happy Hill Time to Grill. So give yourselves a big round of applause for coming out to such an awesome event. I'll speak for Drake. Believe it or not, yes, Julia, we saw her channel. She, but she's she's a very, very shy person, very, very quiet, so uh, she probably won't talk in the microphone. But if you meet her out there, she'll be more than happy to talk to you. But the way I got into YouTube was everybody knows uh, Jeremy's neighbors, the um, the Haley's. The, well, they are my actual my in laws. So my granddaughter Zoe, by well, yeah, by marriage, um, her, her father's is parents are Tina and Brian. So uh, when wait, wait, wait. That's the real finger out there, right? Yeah, the, that is the original fingers from the finger. I brought these as well. Yep. So, well, I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these just yet. Maybe we'll just uh, find some lucky winners or something. But these are actually the original fingers that Jeremy cut off when he started carving a cactus. For some weird reason, I kept them. I don't know why, but maybe it was God's fate to have them here to, to give away to some of you fans. So uh, we'll figure out what we're gonna do with those here. But, um, but yeah, so the way I got started was um, Jeremy was looking for work out at the, out the ranch and uh, so I sent the email over because uh, Chelsea, my daughter, obviously, Josh's wife, she's like, oh yeah, this YouTuber moved in next door to Tina and Brian. And at first it was a great, it was you know, pretty cool, fun relationship, you guys know the history. And so then I was at Walmart one day and lo and behold, here's some guy in a big gray hoodie pushing a shopping cart and it was Jeremy. So I was like, what anybody else does? I go, what the hell? And then, uh, and then so I told him, I was like, yeah, I sent the email over. I know you guys need some help out there in the ranch and uh, I'll be more than happy to help. But uh, that's, that's kind of how it happened, and uh, I'm super thankful for Jeremy. I would have never gotten into YouTube and been a YouTuber, but now my goal is to be a full-time YouTuber, and with the help of all y'all, me and Julia are both working on it. We'll have her another video soon, but uh, yeah, it's all because of Jeremy is, is why I got into this, and now why I know all of you. So thanks to Jeremy for the people of YouTube, so we got to all of you. So that's, that's the story of what you're doing. And if you know, it's whatever I'm doing, so I don't know. You'll see tomorrow's video. Wait. Okay, where are we at? about Julia? Julia. What's your cooking? No. Julia says no. What's okay, Julia, what's, what's your next cooking? What's your, what's your next thing you want to cook? Sunglasses. What? Those wapos, give them your sunglasses. So you can't see. What, what would be the next video that we're going to do? We're going to cook. It's going to be where? Where are we going to do? We're going to tell you where we're, where we're going to do it. In the cabin. In the cabin, that's right. So if you didn't watch this we are so close to the cabin. I have literally probably two days of work on it, and then we can move in completely. But getting those two days is hard, because I'll be right back on the track tomorrow, and then Chuck goes to the shop on Monday, and then... So maybe by the end of next week, that is my thoughts and hopes. And so that's, that's the goal. But thanks to everybody for watching, hanging out, and uh, clicking that whole notification bell. No, he's telling everybody to click a video, or post a video, right? Shameless plug. Are you watching? What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> We're just trying to make people laugh. Changing the world a little after the kind. Thanks a lot, folks. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is the store size original Guapo! Are you stepping in, Camille? Hold on. Are we out of order? Is the mayor here? You're out of order! Is the mayor here? Let's hope the mayor's not order. here. Um, all right, well, I guess I, I, it's my turn. Um, well, me and Jeremy met, like, really organically. We had nothing to do with YouTube at all. We were pretty much, um, I was just uh, at, a, at a storage auction, and, um, and some guy kept on yelling at Jeremy for recording him. And, um, and he made all these countless threats, and... You know, just to make the long story shorter, uh, you know, we ended up going and we, we bought our auction uh, um, units and we're paying and the guy's attitude completely changes. He busts through the door, he gets busted his door, Psh, this guy just threatened my life. I'm calling the police on Jeremy, he's threatening my life. You know? And me and all the other auction buyers, we're like, we turn around and we're like, you are just, how you just were threatening Jeremy the whole entire time? Jeremy took him aside while we're ready to pay and he goes, Listen, if you, if you talk to me like that ever again, yeah. I will burn you. 
and, and it scared the guy. And I, you know, this is. How was that? How was that? He was like, don't you ever talk to me. Florida, Otta Creek, burning, sensitive subject, okay? I did not say that. Right, I want right, to clarify. Right, okay, right. I want to clarify whatever, what I said. Yeah. I will I, kill you, whatever. I did, I did not, I I did not handle you. that I situation you. in public. I pulled him aside privately. I said, you ever speak to me and disrespect me like that again, I will rip your tongue out, shove it down your face, and you, you will never talk again. And that's what I said. I didn't that's want to what say I said. it like that. I don't want to get into detail that much, but Jeremy went ahead and cleared it up for you. Um, Anyways, you know, to be to, to be honest and not to be dramatic, since I met this man, my life has changed entirely. Um, I, you know, I took on full time YouTubing. I was full time reselling after I graduated college, and you know, I thank God every day for meeting Jeremy. And you know, I see what he does for everybody around him. And you know, YouTube is such an amazing platform. And I just want to take this time to absolutely thank every single one of you guys for coming out here and being awesome. Um, and you know we, we'll always continue to provide you know what we provide and 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 that's about it yeah Jeremy's awesome you don't want to talk no I'm my, my last name is Abel go ahead come on and Camelia You gotta go up front. You gotta go up front. I heard you to tell the story oh, how we met. <laughs> you have to tell the story how we. How, what do you mean, tell me? <laughs> yeah, you tell us that. You put it next to your mouth like this. <laughs> we're both. We're both. We're both here. You two. You two. We'll yeah. stand next to you. You tell them all the story. Okay. Tell us an Egyptian. We won't love you. <laughs> Listen, I do not want a bunch of Arabic speaking around me again. I already did that at Christmas. I can't understand it. Let's speak English. But I want to say something in Arabic for all of us, for do all it. of you. Do it, girl. Do it. Go this way a little Anna bit. There we go. means I love you all. <laughs> Closer to your mouth. George is my nephew. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> because George is You see? You see? George is a male. <laughs> I am never letting you on a microphone again. So, Georgette. As a female, <laughs> Georgette. But anyway, um, since I met Jeremy and my <laughs> niece, uh, it's been a blessing. You all hear the story about the orphanage, and uh, I was telling them the, the, how the Lord sent me to Egypt to help all these kids, and out of generosity, you know, they offer to announce it on your two, the YouTube channel. And since then, you know, the book bag blessing, it was more and beyond we asked for. Yes. I think you watched the video, but to be there and see the kids, I don't wanna cry, but. Just let it out, let it out, let it out. <laughs> it's priceless, you know, to handle the kids that gift and uh, Amen. to tell them that you have to have this blessing so they all pray for you they all thank you for the generosity yeah. and I pray that we continue this mission yeah. so yeah. she's crying that's Arabic. That's Egyptian tears right there. Yeah, that's, that's like that's like magic tears. That's from. Well, I can auction my tears. <laughs> that's from the Egyptian tears. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you for all. If you haven't subscribed, then I'm not talking to you. But the ones that have subscribed and hit that bell to get their notifications, thank you, thank you, thank you. Without you guys, well, obviously we wouldn't be here. Okay, so thank you. And Mr. Hales and I, well, first off, we were both born in 1977. Okay. And speaking of which, your birthday's coming up, isn't it? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jeremy. About him, anyways. So, both Jeremy and I were kind of like alpha males. We both run our own companies. We have employees. We have a lot in common, but sometimes we have a lot in common that also causes some friction, right? We're like two male dares out there hitting our horns together. So, I'm as nice as nice can be. I'm a until you cross me the wrong way. And we're going to talk about that story right now. So as you guys know, I'm a professional auctioneer. And I was out there doing, conducting an auction. And some guy comes over there. Hold on, Christian. Okay. I said, excuse me, sir. No cameras. Okay. Mr. Hales, you tell Jeremy no cameras. First thing he does, runs this car. Oh, I got this piece of paper from a lawyer. Hold on. You see what this piece of paper says? I can record anywhere. I said, this piece of paper, right? I can record anywhere. I said this. This is private property. You can't record anywhere, but guess what? I'm going to make a deal with you, sir. He did not know this at the time, but I was under contract for a television show. In California at the time, I was not allowed to be recorded. Okay. So I had to take him to the side and tell him this. He probably looked at me like, yeah, right. Yeah. But anyways, I was under a contract at the time. And that's when I met Jeremy Hill, because I basically told him not to film. Then I said, you could film, just don't put me or the people in the film. So he, he obliged. I appreciate that. And I took his little lawyer paper and threw it in the garbage. And, uh, but so that's when I first met Jeremy. And then after that, we slowly built a relationship as friends. And... You gotta understand, I've been in the auction business and storage unit business a long time, 15 years or so. So when he came in, he's an outsider. When he started coming filming things, what would they do to you, Jeremy, when you try to go film a unit? Slam the door. Slam the door shut. You ain't seen what I got. That's how it was, ladies and gentlemen. Threaten me. Threaten them and everything else. Now, I like to say I kind of helped bring Jeremy into the fold a little because I've known these guys forever. We've been friends for a long time. Unfortunately, some of them aren't even with us anymore. They passed away. But, you know, we had that opportunity to become friends. And I tell you what, every day I seen Jeremy, he would say, Rob, what are you doing? You need to go on YouTube. You need to go on YouTube. There's a million dollars sitting in your building right here. You need to go on YouTube, go on YouTube, you go on YouTube. And finally, the little bird, I started going on YouTube. And now I'm here. So he changed my life, he changed Bravo's life, he probably changed everybody's life in here. So thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All right. I don't know who asked that question, but that was a that was a loaded question. Okay. Honky. Did it again. Did it again. All right. My uh, joke. I see you. I see you, niche lady. What up? What up, niche lady? I'm gonna get to you next, but before I do, before I do, Conky and Noreen with Conky's Flippin' Adventure, not to be confused with Flippin' Adventures. This is Flippin' Adventures right here. Okay. She's not Conky. For the last time, she's not Conky. Okay. Way better looking than Conky. Way better looking. Look at that hair. George is going to have hair like that in another few years. <laughs> okay, so, are we still live? Yeah. Oh, that's not going to go well. Okay, so, Conky and Noreen, actually, uh, they have a little something for you. And, Conky, I'm going to give you the microphone. Remember, you're going to keep it near your mouth so that they can hear you. Okay, no passing out. 
Okay. And uh, and then we're gonna get niche lady question after you're done with this portion of the program. Okay, somewhere around here is a mystery box. What do we do with it? Is it back there? Does somebody grab that? Okay, who here has seen us open a mystery box on our channel? A lot of people. Let's let's hear it. Let's hear it. Here's the thing. Okay. So as you know. Um, Jesse with Clearthris bought a unit and gifted it to us. And it was as we were sort of looking at each other saying, should we bid on that? Uh, maybe we should. Yeah, the garage is full. We don't have the room. Jesse says, I'll take it. And then he gives it to us. Then he gives it to us. We found the room, okay? We had to. It took up the space that I would park one car in my garage. And it has been in there for over a year. For those of you who don't know, uh, we bought a, uh, Jesse bought the 10 by 10 by 10 uh, storage unit. It had 300 plus mystery boxes. We call them mystery boxes because they're sealed shut. Most of them are this size. And we found everything from the woman's uh, kitchen utensils to silver coins in them. And one of the last ones we opened had the silver coins. We have 100 left, and we threatened to bring one down here and give it away. And that's what we did. So there is what we are doing. Okay. Um, just to let you know, um, for the most part, I would say 97% of these boxes, brand new stuff, old new stock. all Wrapped in six bags each. Wrapped in 12 <laughs> bags each. So that's part of the fun that whoever's going to win this box is you got to probably open up about six to 12 bags to get to the one item in there. But for the most part, it is brand new stuff. Awesome. Unless it's her whole old kitchen utensil or something. That was just the one box. One box was that. Okay. So everybody got a red ticket in their uh, swag bag. And we have a corresponding ticket in here. And I'm going to draw a ticket name unless maybe somebody else out there should draw it. It is a true mystery box. We don't even know what's in it. For most of you who probably know, she would sometimes write on the outside what was in it. We could kind of decipher that was what was in it. But in this box, we have no idea. So it is a true mystery box. Yeah, we wrote mystery box on it. But that, that wasn't there when we got the box. There's no other writing on the box. And also, if you are the winner and you cannot take it with you, we will gladly take it back home with us and we will ship it to you at no cost. Aww. So, who wants to draw the uh, ticket? Let's get our youngest member here. Youngest member, reach in here and pull out one ticket. Okay. Oh, he's got his in his hand. Don't get him confused. Yeah. Don't, don't just around. automatically pick your own. Okay. All right. What is the number on the ticket? We've got... Can you read that, Conky? <laughs> <laughs> there is no distance I can hold that from my face and read that. Here you hold it. All right. Three, seven, five, six, zero, seven, four. Bingo! Who got it? Who got it? Do we have a winner? I, I couldn't read it either. Is that it? We have a match! Oh, yeah. we got it. Woo. All right, Charles, are we opening it? No, we're not opening it. We're opening it. We're not opening it. We're only here to five. Okay, keep your tickets, everybody. Because um, we're going to do, we're going to use these tickets for something else. Yeah. What are we doing? So, again, like Jeremy said, these are the original cactus fingers before he started carving up the cactus. And again, I brought them. I had no idea what I was going to do, but I figured what better way than give a chance that everybody here gets a chance. So, I'll go ahead and draw two tickets. I still have one finger left. Not sure what I'll do with that one yet, but uh, yeah, get your tickets out. Away. Where's Ryan at? Congratulations. Come here, dude. Thank you. Ryan, Ryan was here earlier. He was telling me out, so you're going to help me out right here. Pull, 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 pull a ticket out the box. All right, Ryan, read that ticket for me. What's the numbers on it? Because I can't read it either. Seven, five, five, eight, eight, seven. All right. Can anybody hear that? No. All right. We're going to read one more time, real loud. Three, seven, five, five, eight, eight, seven. We got it. We got one back there? I almost got it. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my
Yeah. No, I guess we're gonna have John Melvin. Alright. So yeah, 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 then we can see now. Everybody knows we're gonna see nothing. Alright, Ryan. Well, I think Let's get a win this time, alright? I'll help you read it if you can't see it. Or if I can you help me read it because I can't see it. Ready? Three seven five five nine five three. Nine, right. five, three. nine five three. Nine five three is the last three digits. Does anybody have the nine five three? Over here. All right, we go. Come on over. Come on up. You get a middle finger. Which one? Actually, man, what's your name? It is Therese. Therese. Does anybody get Therese a big round of applause? All right. If you don't know. It's not set up. She's actually, you guys know who she is, right? Yeah. Yes, Everybody are. knows who she is, right? Yeah. So I really didn't set this up, I promise you, but you did win. So now you get to pick which thing you want. Mm. The little one or the big one? The big one. The big one. She likes it big. We'll give her a big, big time round of applause. She goes to the ground. Sweet. Very hard. Right here. All right, right. Thank you. All right. And we have one more finger left to give away. And I need to, I'm going to find somebody else to draw this. I'll draw it. I'll draw Right here. Oh, there it is. Cutie over here. All right. It's Kylie. Kim, Kim. Kinley. I always I always miss the in every time. All right, Kinley. What do we got? Read the number to us. Three, seven, five, five, eight, eight, five. So eight, eight, five is going to be the last three digits. Eight, eight, five. Anybody got it? Go what? Eight, eight, five. No, is it your ticket? It's going to be funny if it was, wasn't it? Yeah. It's not okay. All right. No. All right. Let's. Um, throw that one on the ground. There you go. Grab another one. We'll pick it up. Don't worry. I'll pick it up in a minute. All right. The next number is? 375 5945. 5945. Do we have a winner? Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Kimmy, this is for you. That's what I'm going to do. Give Kimmy a picture and a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. That's our winner. So, that's enough for that, and I'll uh, hand it back over to Jerry. All right, we got more questions. I said, I said, niche lady, Max Labs, I will get to you after, after this one. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, little Pac-Man. I'm gonna get over there one way or another. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just, like Moses, part in the waters here. <laughs> Let's go through the Red Sea. All right, we wanna know who the question is for, and what is the question. You and George. How many people do we have yeah. watching? First, I just want to say 5,491. Amazing role model and inspiration. Yeah. 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 But when are you going to add a turtle or a tortoise to your menagerie? <laughs> menagerie? Isn't that a isn't that an out of boundaries word in a question? Uh, let's see what uh, let's see what George has to say. When are we going to add a turtle or a tortoise? Turtle. Uh, George, do you want to answer this one with Danny? Oh, I was hoping you could answer. I was hoping you would answer. Here we go. This is the same thing. Jeremy, what do you want us to do? Go ask George. George, what do you want us to do? Go ask Jeremy. This is, this is what it sounds like, right? That's what it's like working for Jeremy every day. Yeah. Are you coming up to answer? Thank you. If you want one today, we can pick up one on top of the road. <laughs> it's blooded everywhere. Roadkill turtle? No. <laughs> no, no. So I keep telling Jeremy, no more animals, no more animals, because we're never in one place for for a long long enough time, and so he loves turtles. So I think that's him. the answer. There you go. There's the answer. He loves turtles. I, I do love turtles. All right, Max Lives is over here. We want to know who the question is for and what is the question. It's actually from Aunt Camelia and you. It's related to what she was talking about, and I know a lot of people are going to be asking about it. When are you going to start donations for Egypt again? Ooh. Who's been wondering about that? Donations for the Egyptian kids and the orphans. Okay. So, uh, that is... I'm going I'm to answer part of this, okay? That is something we have to continue to discuss and plan. So we learned a lot through this past year with the donations and the giving and things that we want to tweak and we want to change this year to do it better and more efficiently, okay? So, so that's what I'm going to share with you on my part. We haven't put all the logistics together between us three actually figuring that out. And now I'm going to hand it off to Aunt Camelia George. 
Um, well, there's two parts. Next month on Easter, I'm going back to feed about 500 families box of Easter. So that's the first mission. The second is going to be in September for the book bag. So right now I don't have any plan until we, uh, I have the okay first from God and then we figure out how this is going to work. So God bless you all. <laughs> coming soon. Details will be coming soon. Now you know, you know on the channel we we are about teaching you finances. So some people often ask us, like, like a lot of George's friends, like her personal friends would be like, why is Jeremy talking about money so much? Why is Jeremy talking about money? Why is Jeremy talking about money? Why is Jeremy talking about money? What's the, one of the biggest problems in our world today? Money. Okay, so I'm hoping to actually help educate people on finances and being fun employed. And at the same time, a huge portion of that is financial stewardship. And that's huge for me. And that means giving, okay? And so we will be on the channel. We, we will be giving again to the Egyptian orphans. And again, we want to do that more effectively, more efficiently this year. Frankly, we want to do more. We always want to grow, right? You're not growing, you're dead. But we'll, we'll get those details to you soon. And George and I often talk. One of the things we'd really like to see the channel transition to, and, and don't give me a big, oh, man. Listen, we have fun treasure hunting with storage units. Uh, it's actually really fun fighting with the mayor of Otter Creek as well, believe it or not. Yeah, you're, you're all like, come on, I'll come down. But uh, one of the things we truly want the channel to transition to, we want to show you opportunities, ministry opportunities, and rally a community around that, such as Camp Patmos. We have Dangerous Dave here. He's ministering to children and adults on a daily basis in a dear dear friend of mine, and, and we've shown and shared that opportunity with you. And the Egyptian orphans, we've shown and shared that opportunity with you. Recently, the, the Ark, we've shown and shared that opportunity with you. So our true, our true passion is to actually try and transition the channel completely someday to where it's we're showing you the next opportunity that we can rally around. We're showing you the next opportunity we can rally around. We're showing you the next opportunity and the need that we can rally around. Now, that's not going to happen by tomorrow, but hopefully we'll get there. Okay? Another question. Who's got a question? we got Aunt Patty over here. I saw her hand. Questions for Guapo. Have you ever considered putting a dude counter on your channel? Uh, yeah! Dude! Uh, I think the mic broke. Hang on a second. Um, I didn't, um, I didn't, to, this is his completely an, uh, honest answer here. I didn't, but I will now! Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah! I didn't say dude once in that answer. That was weird. Never heard him not say dude in a sentence before. All right, I see another question. I see one right over here. Who is your question for, and what is the question? Question is for George. Can I have a hug? That question is for Jeremy. And the answer is, all right, bring it in. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. George, he wants a hug. I don't know what her answer is. I don't. I don't know. She, last time she told me, "Why don't you answer? Why don't you answer?" I, I, oh, okay. Well, she's answering this time. All right. I see this hand first, straight back. I'm gonna go back here. How are we doing on battery life and time? I don't know. I can't check. All right. Perfect. All right. Hey, if we die, we die. Okay. All right, see this hand right back here. We want to know who your question is for and what the question is. Thanks, Renee. Okay, my question is for either George or Jeremy. There. Thank I'd you. like to know the origin of the Jeremy with a J, uh, with a G, and, and Mike. George with Thank a J. you, Mike. This is definitely a George answer because yeah, the Renee. origin is with George. So George is going to come back up. Probably going to start hugging people again. <laughs> And then she's going to say, you answer. Jeremy and I love to joke around. And I think we were doing a coin pusher once, and I, and I called him Jeremy. 
and that's where Jeremy with the G came from. And then he he loves to level one up, and George with the J came up. He's always trying to one up me, so that's where that came from. <laughs> so to clarify in our relationship, so there are a lot of people that leave comments. Oh my goodness, Jeremy, how can you put up with her? Oh my goodness, George, how can you put up with him? This is why we actually like each other, okay? So we met each other and 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 we we just died laughing, like died laughing with each other. We're both extremely sarcastic. Extremely sarcastic. And and a lot of people, especially our overseas viewers, don't understand sarcasm as humor. And so we honestly, I'm just I'm going to be very bold. We don't care. We're just going to live our lives the way we live our lives and crack each other up and love each other and keep moving on with life. Whether people understand our humor or not, that's what we're going to do. Okay. So we just go, okay, we're just going to keep on going. Okay, I saw, I think, Mike here. Listen, I got to share something with you about Mike, okay? I, I want to share this with you. Mike, last night, we, uh, there was a bunch of people at barbecues last night. And Mike came up to me, and Mike came up to me and said, listen, I want you to understand that you all are my family. And he started to share that with me. And that's the reality. The reality is that so many of you, I mean, to put the names with the faces, we felt like internet family, but now it's physical. You're actually here. And Mike came straight up. He's like, you, you all are my family. I think he said it best. Your family, your family, your family, your family. Your family. So no greater joy to be with family here. Here's Benjamin Mike. Question for who and what is the question? It's going to be for the pastor, the address. Um, is there a separate donation for, to donate for kids that don't have anything that can go to camp? All right, Dave. The question is, how do we donate for kids who don't have anything to go to camp? You can go to camppatmas.com and right on the website there, go to donate. And you can donate right into our scholarship fund. Uh, so that's the easiest way to do that, uh, www.camppatmas.com. Uh, go to the donate, you can donate right there on the thing, uh, or you can send us a check through the mail uh, at uh, P.O. Box 1920, Kelly's Island, uh, Ohio, 43438. Uh, and, uh, so, Will you take donations today? I yeah, I've already been taking those. I've got those filed away here. And so those, anything you give me today will go right into scholarships. And um, actually, a little story about scholarships. Ohio was going to do... Uh, it's called the ACE program. Uh, they did it last year where they helped every family uh, with a certain uh, income that every kid could get $500 to go to camp. And that was amazing, but this year they stopped it for overnight camps. So we were all set to help a, a lot of kids with that, uh, but uh, they pulled that out from under us. So uh, we are uh, definitely need some scholarship again this year uh, to help campers come to camp. So thank you so much for, you guys have already been so generous to Camp Patmos. And we, we thank you so much for that. So uh, be generous. You're, you know, help kids come to camp and they'll have a great time. And we yeah. give them the gospel. They get to meet Jesus. And it changes their life. Yeah. All right. I, I saw this hand over here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one over here. And we want to know who your question is for and what is your question. It's for you. I want to know how you ended up with the rock unit. Oh my goodness. Okay. She wants to know how I ended up with the rock unit. Now I'm going to tell the story. Okay. So, okay. Everybody is going to have something to say about the rock unit, okay? Now, I have built what I consider a very healthy rapport with a lot of the business owners in the storage unit business. And so when I go in, I usually try and get there early and I'll go in and I'll talk to the manager and a lot of the managers like me. They know when they sell me something, that unit will be completely and totally clean. They will never have to think about it again. They know if, exactly, exactly. Not everybody up here is like that, okay? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. They know if they sell me something and, and there's an individual that wants it back, they know that at our expense, we will do whatever we can to give it back. Whether that's even going back to Goodwill and buying it all back for the second time to then give it back, okay? So we've built what I consider a good rapport. And with this particular manager, I went in and just like I always did, and I said, listen, what unit would you build? 
And so, so a lot of times we're like, what you know what you've been on? And she was all this. I promise you, they did not scale the phone down to a giant wall of China. And Rob, being Rob, he's like, I think Jeremy's got some insider information on him. And so Rob and I are literally bidding back and forth. Rob thinks Jeremy knows something. And this happens at the auctions a lot. People see me score, and I score because I bid right, okay? I don't bid on garbage, I bid right. I look at hundreds, if not thousands of storage units. I always say we bid on 1%, and so out of every 100, there's one that we would buy. So I bid right. This day, I did not bid right. I did not use this. I used this from the manager. And so Rob started bidding, I was bidding, Rob was bidding, I was bidding, I was bidding, I was bidding. And trust me, I wish Rob won it, okay? All right, Rob wants to say something about that unit. Cocky wants to say something, Rob. The moral of the story, don't be greedy. I gave every single one of those rocks away. I was not greedy. Thank you for those rocks. Okay, so one thing that never made it to the video, his video, because he did a video on the rocks. Um, we were, I have a dump truck, a 12 foot bed. I've never been able to lift those rocks with the, the, the power of the dump truck. It has never failed to lift anything else. It was that many rocks, it was that heavy. But we were loading the rocks into my dump truck like the next day or the day after. And the manager comes back and as Christian and Jeremy were struggling to get one of the rocks up into the back of the truck, she walks up, and I swear she says this. She says, oh, that rock's a lot of money. You go to buy that rock in a landscape supply, and it's going to cost you three, dollars $400. The look on his face made me laugh for an hour. I could not. I'm sorry. It was just funny. So we got it. We got all these rocks loaded up. We took them home. We dumped them off. And then they sort of took on a, 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 a mind of their own, and uh, a few of them made them their way back to Jeremy, and the view in the, the form of being painted and, and things like that. But it was just so funny, so funny when she told us how much those rocks were worth, or how much she thought they were worth. Because you sell them on eBay, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not a landscaping supply company. If you didn't know that, nobody comes to me for rocks and boulders. Okay. So, what's that? $500, then you have fees on top of that, clean out fee, and I almost lost two employees. <laughs> so, that, that was the Christian worst unit we've ever done? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It was horrible. That was a horrible day, and I promised them, where's Patience? She's here somewhere. I promised you both after that, I said, never again. I said, we will never, ever do this again. I will never make this mistake again. And if we do, forget that cleaning deposit. We'll get banned from the facility. We're going to go party. <laughs> All right. Do we, have, do we have another question? I see a hand all the way back there. Can you shout it to me? Well, I just want to say. Well, not who I was pointing to, but let's go for it anyway. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Amen. You cannot outgive God. Amen. If you give, he will give to you. Amen. And money over shall it be returned into your bosom. Okay? So, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a witness to that because, you know, and, and I'm not bragging, okay, when I say this, but when I started tithing regularly, Okay, the Lord got me from 10% up to 12% and then up to 15%. Well, that 5% above that is not tied. That's offering. So now I'm helping build schools in Africa with that. Amen. And, and, you know, God is so good. God is good. Yep. And, and Jeremy, I mean, uh, George even said that in my email back because I said, well, God, it's good because I got an Airbnb in Ocala for 150 bucks for two nights. Nice. Nice. I know where I'm going tonight. <laughs> Oh, thank you. And I just, you know, God, Father God, I just lift up George and Jeremy and the rest of the crew and the rest of these YouTubers. And Father God, I pray, Lord, that you would 
would just continue to bless them. And Father God, let them reach that million subscribers. Woo, let them reach good. two million subscribers where we got to hire the whole town of Chiefland. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hey, I, I do want to add one thing to that, and I thank you for all the encouragement. Listen, I'm not perfect. You see reality in my life every day. Every day you see me mess up, do the wrong thing, do the right thing. I'm not perfect. That's why I know I need the, my perfect Savior, because I know I'm not perfect. I, th I hope you understand that. I had a person recently... I had a person recently text me and say, oh, you're, you're this Christian, you, you this, that, and the other. And I'm sitting there thinking, I am not perfect. I am not perfect. That's why I need Jesus in my life. And I look forward to the day in glory with his perfection. I hope you understand that. Okay. One, one more question. High five. What up? All right, should we, should we take the young man right here? Yeah. Who's your question for? You. Uh-oh. What was your greatest investment? Oh, All right, listen. Man. You, you, no, it definitely was not George. She cost a lot. Uh, and I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about hair, stress, years of my life. I mean, this is Arabic women. They are not easy. She here? Okay, I'm safe. Hey, Camelia, she's, she's perfect, but... She's teaching George, okay. And by the way, I give George stress and gray hair and the whole deal. That's what makes it so fun. So my greatest investment, now you got to look at me when I answer this, okay? So when I was 19, I saved, I worked so hard. I saved up all of my money. I had roughly about $15,000 in the bank. I worked hard and I had $15,000 in the bank and I went and I bought my first house and I put that money down on a mortgage on my first house. I bought that first house for $69,000, 500, okay? That first house that I bought, I then paid off. Now, this is no joke. Instead of turning the lights on, I would get candles at the thrift store and I would burn candles so I could save money on the lights so I could pay off my mortgage. Silly things like that. Silly, silly things like that. And in three years, I had that house paid off. That house to date, because I turned that piece of real estate into a rental property. That house to date has made me over $250,000 in rent, okay? So, the greatest investment you can ever make is number one, giving your life to Jesus Christ. Number two, buy real estate, okay? And, and all of us know out here, there are two things that change your life, Jesus and Metamucil, okay? All right. No, another question. Har Harriet, I'm going to take yours. You got to shout it out. We do when you share that with us. I, I want to, I'm, I'm going to give the microphone to everybody, okay? I'm gonna give the microphone to everybody because she's saying, do you realize the impact that you have? This is something that George and I go back and forth on. We really do. Because sharing your life out to everybody to say anything they want about it is a very, very risky, risky thing to do. Scary. You know, we get everything from death threats to you, you name it. Okay, and this is a daily thing for us. And so there are times, usually it's George every other day, I quit, I'm never doing this again. I'll be like, all right, I should be over it in an hour. So, and so she'll be like, I'm never doing this again. I hate YouTube, we're not doing this. And this is, I'm quoting her right now, right? Right, Ben? Yeah, okay, exactly. So it, it's much thicker on, it, or it hurts her more than it does me. So um, I, I kind of got, I kind of got thick skin early on in, in preaching and traveling and speaking and where people will go, oh man, that Jeremy Hales, he's too loud. That Jeremy Hales, he's too excited. That Jeremy Hales. And I was just like, all right, well, I love Jesus. If you don't, that's your issue. If you want to love Jesus with me, let's, let's go love Jesus. So I, I got to that point of, I was like, I, I really don't care, but it does take a mental toll on you. So for every positive comment that you guys leave, 
we have to block individuals that say the most ridiculous, ridiculous things in the world. So there are times where we question, is this worth it? There are times where George and I go, where's the cutoff spot? And we disappear. And that will happen someday. It, I'm telling you ahead of time. Yes, it will. We will say, done, over, you'll never find us, okay? Or I may be the mayor of Otter Creek, you never know. Okay. So, so, I'm not on YouTube anymore, I'm the mayor of Otter Creek. I'll call the law on you. Uh, so, I am leaving County. So I do, I do, like George and I, we talk a lot about this because there's points where she's like, I was in healthcare, I actually made a difference. And I'll go, look at this, somebody just said that you saved their life. They watched a video of you and they were cracking up. They were in their depression and despair. They were gonna take their life and then all of a sudden, here they are. They're, they're, they're literally watching us talk about life and what we're doing for, for kids over in camp and what we're doing for kids in Egypt and the whole deal. And they're hearing about life and where real life comes from. And we, do, we don't shy away from talking about Jesus Christ. Now, we don't preach, sometimes I do. I know, I do it on the live stream. And I'm getting there at this point right now too. But, but, the reality is we don't know unless you tell us. And then George and I will go back and be like, George will be like, we just got this email. You have to read this. Look at this. This person was in their despair. They were going to take their life. And they didn't. They watched our channel and they found humor again. And they brought out of that despair and they found hope. And they found. And then I sit there and I look at her and go, how does it get any better than this? Like, how does it get any better than this? And so that's the ups and the downs that we go through. So we don't realize it until you guys verbalize it. And remember, for every one positive comment, we probably get not 10, 10,000 negative comments. And so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transition over to Guapo, see what, how, how, what uh, do you realize? What do you see as far as impact? Um, well, <laughs> what I realize as far as impact is, no, no, I'll just, no, all, all, all seriousness, guys, I get, I get emails all the time. You know, early on, you know, Jeremy told me and warned me about how much of an impact the YouTube channel could be. And I, it's one of those things where you just don't realize, you know, how, how serious it actually is unless you actually, like, do it. And, and I just, like I said, I, I'm so grateful and so thankful that, you know, I have the ability to go ahead and, and change a life and, and change a mood and uplift the spirit and, 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 and change a perception. And, and I love that we all also share such a very serious connection with with the Lord and um, and we owe everything to God and it's just it's just it's a, it's amazing to me I see a lot of impact all the time with especially with auctions financial stewardship you know we touched on a lot of different topics that I mean we we experience it all year every day hopefully well, we try to upload every day that's another one rule right we try to get their little Japan release every once in a while Jeremy hey but the impact this is very serious and um and thank you guys and we'll, we'll continue to impact you guys. Guapo. Um, YouTube's a weird, weird format. First off, people, it's there's no filter because it's really easy to say anything you want when you're behind a screen. All right, and I've had people say, "How dare you go through these people stuff? How dare you try to sell this stuff?" Let me tell you something really quick, ladies and gentlemen. If when you die, there's only three things going to happen: your stuff, okay? Someone's going to keep it. Someone's going to throw it out or someone's going to sell it. That's it. You can't take it with you. There's no U-Haul to the cemetery. Okay. It's just stuff. Okay. The Lord told us this is just the earthly things. They don't mean anything, guys. People put way too much value on earthly things. That's right. So people come and said all kinds of things like, and I try to explain them. One, Jeremy, myself, Guapo, Conky. We're actually helping one the storage facility because they need to get rid of the stuff. They're not in the business of selling people's junk. They're in the business of running storage units. Two, okay, what are they gonna do with all this stuff if we don't take it? And then we get to give it to other people. And I've got to so many times see the joy in someone's face. Rob, I had that when I was a kid. Robert, my grandmother had that. Robert, I, my uncle, I remember, just it brought me right back to that time. And that is the most beautiful, beautiful thing that I get to share with people is I get to find things and I get to take them and connect them back to that great memory they had when they were a kid or whatever it was, that awesome memory of that stuff. And, and then it's just stuff, but 
that stuff can bring that awesome memory back. And that's why, one, I appreciate the YouTube format. Unfortunately, like Jeremy said, there's a lot more negative comments than positive. You would think it's opposite, but no. People will tell me all the things. I mean, one time they told me I had my son buy a storage unit. How dare you let your son buy a storage unit? How I said, I'm teaching him financial stewardship. I'm teaching him how to be an entrepreneur. And you guys are saying, oh, that's a horrible dad. Well, I guess I'm a horrible dad, okay? So, but no. At the end of the day, YouTube won. Look at all the people who brought together because of Jeremy and... I love YouTube. I love you guys, and thank you for coming. You were here too. Yeah, Robert! Yeah, Robert! Second sense in the house. All right, so uh, for, for those who don't know, I uh, possibly you do, obviously, because we document our lives every day, but you know, for the past 22 years, I've been traveling around the world. I've been very fortunate, and my goal in life was always to, to I was that guy crazy enough to think I could change the world, because it takes that person crazy enough to think they can change the world to change the world. And so, uh, I always thought that was my outlet. I've been to close to 30, if not more than 30 countries around the world. And just by doing shows and after shows, talking to kids, doing autographs, you know, that was, that's what I thought was my reach to change people's lives. And, and, and God gave me a whole new journey through Jeremy and YouTube. And now, Julie tells me that every day, you know, seeing all you guys' positive comments and stuff. And, and like, I'm now literally changing the world one smile at a time through YouTube. And all thanks to Jeremy and all of you. So uh, that's the impact it's done for us. Okay. Well, I don't do a whole lot on YouTube yet, but I am out there. Uh, so, uh, but what I get the unique ability to see young people's lives changed for eternity. Uh, to see a young person come in who is just depressed, anxious, and you can just see the darkness upon them. And, and they come into camp and they're just, they're all shut down and they're just, they're hiding. Uh, but by the end of the week, to see them brighten up, to see the, the light of the gospel into their hearts, and then you can see it in their smile when they leave. And we had a, a young lady uh, a couple of years ago came like that, and she's like, I, I'm not going to stand up during worship. I'm not going to pay attention. And just over the week, uh, our, our cabin leaders loving on them, the other cabin, uh, the cabin mates loving on her, uh, just sharing the gospel by actions. Uh, and she, at the end of the week, she ended up giving her life to Christ. Uh, the next summer, she came back, and she helped another girl, just like her, get out of that darkness, get out of the confusion of the world, and turn her life over to Christ. And so that I get to see that. And, and you guys, you are all participants in that now, because you have been giving to Camp Patmos, and you have an investment into the gospel at Camp Patmos. So you guys, thank you so much for your impact. Okay, so if somebody five years ago would have walked up to me and said, in five years, you're going to get in your car, you're going to drive to Florida, and you're going to meet with a bunch of people you don't know yet, you're going to sign your name, not your name, the name Conky, to I don't know how many t-shirts, because, and the mystery box, because you've jumped out of a plane, you bought a storage unit, you filmed yourself going through the storage unit, and I did not pass out. I did not pass up. Okay, all right. Pause for a second here, okay? I'll get back to what I was saying. I did not pass out. I, I, look, we were supposed to jump from 10,000 feet, okay? Where is he? Wrong. This guy here decides to make it, what, 18,000? Where did he jump from? 18,000? You're supposed to jump from 10. Yeah. And this is about, would be my four times, my four times skydiving. So I was like, I go to Jeremy, I said, man, don't you think we go up a little higher? So I went to talk to the instructor. He goes, oh, you guys go 18000 You just got to pay a little extra money. And Jeremy's like, Rob, that's the best idea I heard all day. Let's not tell these guys. <laughs> so, Jeremy, so, Jeremy's like, let's do it in diapers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll add that to the mix. Jump out of a plane in diapers with guys you don't know yet, okay? So the plane goes up to 10,000 feet. One guy gets up and jumps out. I'm looking at these idiots saying, are we jumping out of the plane? They said, no. The plane starts going up. I said, no, wait a minute. I got out of this plane to jump from a certain height. Where are we going? Rob answers the question. I ain't jumping out of this plane. Well, I jumped out of the plane, okay? I get to the ground, and I was so happy they didn't get on the ground, I just wanted to make contact with the ground. I wanted more than my feet 
to feel what the ground felt like, okay? So I laid down and I looked up at the sky where I just came from. I said, I was just up there, but now I'm down here. I did not pass out. I landed like a rock star. I'll leave it at that. All uh, right, here's what we're going to do. We got a little bit of time, transition time. With the live stream, all of you that have been with us, thank you so much. We're sad that you couldn't be here. We have had so much fun together in the Hale, What the Hales family. Yeah. Kristen, there's, there's, there's people everywhere. Everywhere. Kristen, go ahead and shut it down. If you don't know how to shut it down, uh, George will be able to help you. We're going to transition a little bit. We got time to hit the bathroom.